A special report recently released by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says that big changes in global land use, agriculture, and human diets are needed to curb greenhouse gas emissions. Agriculture, as it's practiced today, is responsible for about 13% of all greenhouse gas emissions. The UN says eating less meat and wasting less food overall can play important roles in controlling greenhouse gas emissions. Dr. Jason Roundtree of Michigan State University says greater efficiency in meat production and making that production carbon neutral is part of the solution. Today we're at Lake City Research Center, which is a Michigan State University Ag Bio Research facility in Lake City, Michigan. I've been the facility coordinator here for around 10 years. And uh, one thing that we'd like to do would be to model beef cattle production practices uh, that we hope are potentially carbon neutral. What we've been able to do here is we've been able to eliminate many inputs on this farm. Uh, we no longer use uh, herbicides or fertilizers. And what we try to do then is to use the livestock and the grazing cattle uh, in a way that helps to build carbon in the soil. Roundtree and colleagues are mimicking the way buffalo grazed and thrived across America with cattle, demonstrating that beef production can be profitable while generating no net increase of carbon to the atmosphere. Let's look at the Great Plains. And for a very long period of time, we've had bison that have migrated across those grasslands. And those bison, they come across, they, they eat, they stomp, they manure, they urine, they break up an area, and then they leave. Uh, they may not come back for a year or two. And over that time period, uh, there's tremendous amount of organic matter and carbon actually built in those soils. And so what we try to do in a domesticated level using domesticated cattle is to mimic the way that bison migrated through the plains. We allow these animals to come into an area, we let them graze for one day, and then we move them off. And when we move them off, we next then allow for those plants to fully recover again. So we allow for about a 60 to 90 day recovery period. So those plants um, have the ability to put down roots, to build extra carbon below ground. And, um, and then likewise, we can, can graze the cattle across there and use them as a tool to help regenerate the soil. Beginning in 2011, uh, we began to measure carbon down to 30 centimeters or about 18 inches. And then concurrently, we've had series of research projects where we measure all the greenhouse gases that are fluxing through this system. We can create different grazing systems. We can create different types of forages and treatments. And then we allow the animals to go and graze those treatments. And we have equipment today that where the animal can actually walk in and the equipment drops a little bit of an alfalfa pellet. And as the animal begins to graze that pellet or eat that pellet, we have sensors that begin to suck all the air the animal's breathing in, and we can actually measure real-time methane of what that animal's giving. And we can measure that one animal three or four times a day. We can do up to 25 animals a day. But the point I wanna make is that we've been measuring all of the flexes of these gases going up and down. And we've actually found that over time that we're actually building more carbon below ground than the animals are emitting. Basically in a food system, it is going to take energy somehow. And that may be greater photosynthetic energy, what we're using, we're harnessing the solar panel. Uh, these plants are, are harvesting sunlight, they're, they're growing, they're, they're, they're building root mass below ground, but they're also feeding the cattle. Or the alternative is, is to dump more fossil fuel into that system, whether it be fertilizers, herbicides, and things like that. And so typically what, what the research says is that this model may take more land to produce the same amount of beef, but the beef it's producing is doing so more so from photosynthetic energy versus fossil fuel energy, uh, which has a better environmental footprint.